Hello, everyone. It's Phil Lee returning with another episode of Civil War Chat. Today is Wednesday, the 25th of May, 2022. Today's topic is, was Robert E. Lee a moral coward? Two days ago, the Washington Post published an article by Washington and Lee visiting English professor Laura Brody, charging Robert E. Lee with moral cowardice. Specifically, she cited a 1928 accusation by Black historian W.E.B. Du Bois that Lee fought to perpetuate slavery because, quote, he did not have the moral courage to stand against his family and his clan, close quote. The accusation is false first. The very premise is false. Virginia did not secede to perpetuate slavery. She seceded only after President Lincoln's April 15, 1861 call for 75,000 federal soldiers to force the initial seven cotton states back into the Union. Until then, even as a slave state, Virginia had remained loyal to the Union, as had North Carolina, Tennessee, and Arkansas. Moreover, Virginia had warned Lincoln officially that any federal attempt to coerce the seven cotton states back into the country would dissolve the Union by rendering it mandatory instead of voluntary. Lee famously explained that he sided with Virginia because he, quote, <clears throat> could not draw his sword against Virginia, my native state, close quote. He did not fight for slavery. Before siding with Virginia in 1861, he explained to a prominent Maryland politician, quote, if I owned the 4 million slaves in the South, I would sacrifice them all to the Union, close quote. <clears throat> Four years later, in January 1865, he urged that the Confederate government enlist slaves as volunteer soldiers, quote, without delay, close quote, understanding that they would be emancipated for such service. He thus prioritized Southern independence above slavery, just as Lincoln prioritized preservation of the Union over the constitutional guarantees of states' rights with his Emancipation Proclamation. Since both were motivated by military necessity, they were on the same moral ground, although only Lee, uh, excuse me, although only Lincoln gets any credit for it today. That is a consequence of the winners writing the history. And that's the only kind of history that the Washington Post cares to know. Second, while Lee's disapproval of slavery <clears throat> was, not as strong, was not strong enough for today's critics, even Northerners of his day accepted it as legal within those states that had authorized it. Yankees did not go to war to end slavery but to force the seceded states back into membership in a union to which Southerners no longer wished to belong. Lee, however, showed his courage in different ways, ways that made him the most beloved commander by the soldiers that served him on any, of any general on either side of the conflict. Most notable was his conduct at the Battle of Gettysburg, where Pickett's failed charge left Lee's army with his first decisive defeat. As the repulsed attackers retreated to their own lines, he rode out to meet them mounted on his horse traveler. General Pickett was among those he met, to whom he said, quote, your men have done all that, could be, all that men could do. The fault is entirely my own. It is I that have lost this fight, close quote. As other officers came to him, he made no effort to shift the blame. Quote, it was all my fault, close quote. He repeated again and again in the presence of soldiers of every rank. When he returned his army safely to Virginia about a month later in August, 1863, 
He formally took full responsibility for the defeat by offering his resignation as commander of the army to President Jefferson Davis. But Davis declined it. Consider Lee's conduct in comparison to that of President Joe Biden and his, the head of his Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Mark Milley, and to our Defense Secretary, Lloyd Austin. None of those last three took responsibility for the debacle last September in Afghanistan. Consequently, their cowardice likely caused Russian President Vladimir Putin to sense American vulnerability on the international stage, thereby prompting the Russian to test our resolve in the Ukraine. And the result has been disastrous. $6 a gallon gasoline, reckless inflation, and general incompetence within the Biden administration. Americans would be better off today if our leaders did their duty like Robert E. Lee. But men like Biden and Milley and Austin do not do that. They shift the blame to others. Everybody else is at fault, not them. That's not the way Robert E. Lee did it. He did just the opposite. And that's why he was respected. Southerners trusted Lee because he led by example. Like, mo like his soldiers, he customarily slept in a tent during the campaigning season. In contrast, though, the almighty Union General Ulysses Grant often appropriated a home of a prosperous resident for his headquarters. Grant was sleeping 10 miles away from his soldiers when the Confederates launched a surprise attack on his army at Shiloh. Similarly, at Fort Donaldson, Grant, Grant slept indoors while his troops slept under a February snowfall in Tennessee. Beyond a false accusation of cowardice, Professor Brody ridicules Lee's decision to present himself in his best uniform at the Appomattox surrender. It was not, as Brody implies, a gesture of so-called toxic masculinity, but instead a salute to his soldiers. He was sensitive, sensitively aware that they were badly dressed compared to those in the Union Army. They did not have the clothing to represent themselves with the solemnity that the occasion required of the characteristic Southerner. He would be their surrogate in that uniform. Even though defeated, Lee looked like the victor in the tableau, which was a consolation gift to his soldiers that has been passed down through the ages to their descendants. Finally, Professor Brody stoops to describing Lee's image as the quote, weaponizing, oh, excuse me, weaponization of eugenics, of the eugenics movement, close quote, which she links to his biographer, Douglas Southall Friedman. If eugenics is one of her chief gripes, however, she would do better to focus on W.E.D. Du Bois and other Blacks in the Freeman era. And in 1903, talented 10th essay, Du Bois wrote, quote, the Negro race, like all other races, is going to be saved by exceptional men, close quote. He supported birth control for black women to improve the race's gene pool. In 1932, he argued that Blacks, quote, must learn that among human races and groups, as among vegetables, quality and not mere quantity really counts, close quote. His influence spread the eugenics gospel among other Blacks. In 1934, Thelma Boozer argued that birth control could resolve many of the social problems facing Blacks and society at large at that time. In her Feminist Viewpoint newspaper column, she wrote, quote, more well-born babies, fewer ill-born babies, and sterilization of those unfit to become parents will aid society in solving some of its major problems, close quote. Though many of us think of compulsory sterilization as cruel and inhumane, Boozer and other black leaders 
understood it as part of a strategy for biologically uplifting their race. Lee was not among the moral cowards. Such people can be found, however, among the faculty and administration of Washington and Lee University, where full-throated defenses of Lee are censored. Okay, that's uh, my message for today. I would recommend that you get my book, Causes of the Civil War by Philip Lee. It's gonna give you information you're just simply not gonna get from academic historians and people like uh, the author of this article in Washington Post. Because I look at why the North went to war and why the South went to war. Whereas all the books that you are, nearly all the books that you're gonna get out of the academia is simply gonna tell you uh, based upon their prearranged assumptions, why the South is responsible for the war. Okay, well that's, oh yeah, if you'd like to get an autograph copy of this, it's $20, oh, $26. And you need to email me, phil, P-H-I-L underscore Lee, L-E-I-G-H at me, M-E dot com. If you just want a uh, regular copy, it's uh, $22 at amazon.com and Barnes and Noble. Okay. That's our show for today, and thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.